Hi guys. Okay. <clears throat> In sharing a bit of gear, I want to talk about back in the day, okay? Summertime. We need some sort of light covering. Emphasis on light. I want something that's light to carry. Doesn't cause a big whatever. Yet, if I get a little cold before morning, I want to be able to zip it up or close it up. And for many years, that was a wooby. Um, but there was something else I also carried. And what I'm talking about is during the late spring here in Alabama, my low area, where we go from summer to winter in one day. You literally have the air conditioner on at lunch and that night you gotta turn the heater on. And then you gotta run the heater for like two months. And then you will literally get up this morning and it's like 31 degrees and the high today is 75 and tomorrow the low is 65 and for the next three weeks or whatever, it never gets below 60. You know, that's how it is in our weather. So when we're gonna be camping, we have to be flexible, okay? And one of the things was with the temperature being that way, I want something light, but I really don't need nothing like at 65. I just, my clothes will be sufficient. I'm gonna be in a hammock or whatever that will take care of me, but I want a, a covering. And for many years that was a wool blanket, a wooby, or a piece of gear that I had forever that I loved, and I finally, it got destroyed, I lost it. Well, recently I found another one, and what that is, rides on the bottom of the butt pack. And what this is, is a U.S. Army sleeping bag cover. Now, in the days before Gore-Tex, they made these water repellent. And what this is, is tight weave, good quality cotton that's really tight weave, high thread count and then it's been coated to be water repellent. So it is not truly waterproof. You can't lay down in a mud puddle, but a little bit of sprinkling on it will run off of it. You know, it doesn't saturate through easily. That's the idea. Now, what it is meant to do is go over a sleeping bag because it is itself a sleeping bag. Now, down here at the bottom, and this is to go over a full-size U.S. Army sleeping bag, like the big 48, uh, 49, excuse me, mountain bag, or the intermediate, and etc. These are big, bulky bags. So this is fairly roomy. Along the bottom edge, there's these two pass-through holes. Okay? And that's for you to put the actual ties that's on the sleeping bag through this. And then it has on it is a full-size mummy bag. And it's got a series of snaps along the edge. This was to be a weather flap, a wind flap, because the sleeping bag has a zipper, right? So it, you could zip it up, or if you were in combat conditions where you couldn't zip it up, you snapped the cover closed. That way you could just brrrt and come out of it in a hurry. But what it means is this is in itself a really lightweight sleeping bag. It's heavier than a bed sheet, good deal heavier. It's actually almost like blue jean material. That's the closest thing I can give you to give you an idea what it is like. And once it's been washed and it gets a chance to kind of wear in, it feels like blue jean material, but it's, it, it's tough, okay? But being able to get inside of this, and it's a full-size sleeping bag, and snap it. And you'll also notice it has these grommets. That was because it laced onto the sleeping bag. You put it on the sleeping bag, and then like a pair of shoelaces, you ran this long, basically, shoelace up and down, porpoising it through these grommets to anchor the two together. And so this was what, whenever this became so soiled, so dirty, so nasty from being in the field. This is what you took off and washed to protect the sleeping bag. It also added about 10 degrees of warmth to the sleeping bag and it could be sprayed down with silicone or whatever to make it more waterproof. And I know guys that back in the day they took stuff like Thompson's water seal and made this where it was it would be water. 
you know, and it was because they wanted to protect their bags. Now, what I was using it for was a summer weight bag. It probably weighs a pound and a half, something like that. It's, honestly, it feels like a less than a two liter soda bottle, you know, for a full size sleeping bag that I can get into and snap closed. Now, what temperature is this gonna be used for? In the 60s, in the 70s. This is a summer weight bag down here where I'm gonna use it basically as a quilt. I'm going to lay down, put my feet into it, and then throw it over me like that to cover me, to give me warmth and etc. It's got a mummy type hood top on it where I can put my head into it or I can put a pillow in here. Well, one of the things I liked about it was I could stick a pillow into it and the pillow didn't run away from me in a hammock or whatever. It was just a simple, easy way to do this. Now again, what temperatures? I would run these down into the 60s. If you're wearing adequate clothing, maybe even upper 50s if you're a real warm sleeper, especially on a ground bed where I'd already made up a big pile of leaves or whatever to insulate me from the ground, and I got a fire out in front of me, this was fine. This is all I needed down into the mid 50s because I had external heat source and I had external insulation. So a poncho and this, I was good to go, down to say 55, okay? Now mine, finally after all the years, and I probably used it for seven, eight, ten years, heavy. And it was the break point between I'm toting a wooby in the you know June, July, and August just to throw over the top of me. Okay, I don't even want to get into anything because it's so hot. I'm more concerned about staying cool than I am staying warm. This was the spring and early fall bag where the temperatures might get down into the low 60s when I'm used to 90s. And so that's a little cool. I do need a little something. And being able to snap it up, I trapped that micro environment around me. It was warmer than like a bed sheet. It was warmer. After this, I went to a true sleeping bag because then I needed that kind of insulation. But this rolls up relatively small and tight. It weighs well, relatively nothing. Like I said, two pounds or less. And I can roll it up and put it up under my butt pack. Or I can wrap around the strap like I showed you before to carry my bedroll that way onto it. And still have a poncho for the actual tarp. So with a poncho, this, make my own bed, make my fire, I'm good to go. I just wanted to share that with you. Now, if you're looking for something like this, you're going to have to hunt. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. These are not that common. I can remember back in the 70s and 80s when these were everywhere surplus, that they were basically giving these away. People were turning them into dog beds. Uh, I can remember the church group going to a, a local place and then just giving them like a half of a pickup truck bed full of them because they were going to take and cut them apart and use the canvas for other stuff. It's a lightweight canvas is what it is. But it's well sewed, well reinforced. Now on mine, what it says here in printed is case, water repellent, four, bag sleeping, stock number 27-C-123, international Flouncing Company Incorporated, dated February the 6th, 1945, spec number PQD315A, Philadelphia Depot, and there's supposed to be a sign inspector mark on it. I don't know if you can see that, but I will put it up there for you. And you can see mine's got a little bit of weathering on it. So, 45. 55, 65, 75, 85, 95, 2005, 2015, 2025, it'll be 70 years old. So it's, what, 68 years old? And it's just as good as the day it was made. Now, mine that I had before was made in the 1960s. But the U.S. Army used them up to the 70s. And occasionally you will find them listed as surplus, but what you're looking for is sleeping bag cover, okay? 
Um, and it's not to be con confused with a Gore-Tex bivy bag. Now, a Gore-Tex bivy bag would be a step up from this. Of course, of course the Gore-Tex cover zips and it's waterproof. It's a side zip instead of a, a top snap, etc. And can be a, an excellent cover unto itself. And I have one, and I have used it because I didn't have one of these. But uh, I actually like this better for me, me personally, guys, talking that uh, hammock camping, ground pounding or something where I'm making an improvised bed. I'm going to have insulation to the ground. I'm going to have a uh, roof over me of a poncho or a tarp. i got a heat reflector there. I've got a fire in front of me. All I need is something to kind of hold a little heat around me. This does adequate, more than enough as long as i got good clothes down into, say, mid-50s. <laughs> For me, especially when I'm acclimated to it, okay. But in the summertime, that spring-fall transition, it's great. Now, true, I have a much smaller, much lighter down sleeping bag, like I showed in my videos. But my point is, that down sleeping bag will sweat me out if the temperature is above 50 degrees. I mean, even throwing it over the top of me, I will wake up burning up on the top you know if i'm just throwing it over me on the quilt it insulates that well so to me that relegates that to a winter camping bag you know um i would rather have something like this for that transition okay just my two cents worth hope you've enjoyed this guys please leave any questions or comments below i love to hear from you and if you don't mind before you go hit that like share and subscribe button i'd really appreciate it until next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.